rotten devil. This is what they call the murderer who massacred 51 people in two Christchurch mosques last March. I was born in Bangladesh but have been living in New Zealand for the last 34 years. In, um, uh, uh, my profession is for money. I am a naturopathy doctor. I studied in New Zealand but previously I studied in mechanical engineering. Um, I married my wife in New Zealand. She was also from Bangladesh. We were from same district, but uh, from two different locations. And uh, we married in uh, 1994 uh, in New Zealand. Um, her name is Husna Ahmed. Uh, as her name is Husna, uh, Arabic term, her character was also, she had Husna al she was special, very, very special. Um, uh, she was uh, a, a special teammate for me. Um, two of us had many things in common. Uh, first thing was we both were from religious family. Um, we were practicing. Um, I was at my young age, I was a sportsman. Uh, I used to play soccer, and she was the fastest runner in her primary and high school. Uh, she was the champion in running. Uh, she was lean and thin, but very, very fast. of us wanted to do dawah. Uh, we wanted to do something for Islam on voluntary basis. Uh, we did our work for money, but our spare time, we used to teach Muslim children. Um, and also, uh, we used to meet with non-Muslims uh, to um, discuss about the understanding and misunderstanding between religions. Uh, in New Zealand, um, the majority people are non-Muslim, but wonderful, wonderful people, very good people. They are very humanitarian, uh, and they live in an isolated island, and they always support the peace in this world. Husna was very communicative. She was more communicative than me. She was very smiley, and she could attract uh, other people quite easily. So she had lots of friends among Muslims and non-Muslim ladies, and she was always busy uh, looking after them, inviting them, talking to them about religion, and also helping them in medicinal area, in uh, hospitalization, in childbirth, etc., etc. As a wife, she was uh, uh, very special to me. Uh, we were more than friends. Uh, we were soulmates, and. Uh, It's very difficult not to be emotional uh, when I talk about her. <clears throat> Husna was very special in her last action was a summary 
of everything that she was. And her last action was that when shooting started, she was busy with rescuing children and women. She could have run away. She didn't. I knew she would not. And then she took people out. Then she came in, took another lot out. She came in. And third time, she came in to rescue me. And the shooter, he was shooting. And when his magazine was finished, he was going out to the nearby driveway to bring four magazines and to start shooting. And Husna was so courageous. She was coming in between the shooting inside the mosque. So the last time, third time, she came right inside the masjid, where usually I sit. And then the eyewitness, another sister, Somali sister, she told me later that Husna and her, they went together inside there. And in that corner, there were piles of dead bodies. So she was looking for me. But she didn't realize I was just waiting outside. And then when she was coming out, That is the summary. <laughs> she was not a wife to me. She was my friend, the best human being I ever knew, and the person who could give her life. I don't know whether I could have given that. We used to joke time to time. We used to joke that Husna, we should do a competition. Do you want to be a winner or you want me to be the winner? She always wanted to be the winner. And she won in compassion. She won. I lost. In love, she won. I lost. In humanitarian action, she won. I lost. And that's why <coughs> I believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted her as shuhada. Because she is a winner, she got the highest status. I wish I was in her place, but I am very happy that I have lost to her. I am very happy. I honor her. I appreciate her. So this is the summary of what she was, very selfless, very caring, and very loving. <laughs>
and she was telling me that a silly guy, young man, he was drinking alcohol. Maybe he had a bad day. He made a mistake. Let us forgive him. That was her. That was her. share a daughter. Her name is Shifa Ahmed. She is 18 years old now, first year in the university. Alhamdulillah, she is just like her mom. When I came home, after I heard that my wife was killed, I came home and Shifa was in her high school. They had locked down. Shifa heard about the shooting, but she did not know what happened to us. So when she came home, someone brought her home. The hardest thing was she came running to me. And she said, where is mom? And I was praying to Allah. When she will come and ask me, what would I say? Allah, give me some hikmah. Give me some warning. I don't know what to say. Because if I say anything negative, then it is going to break her heart. I don't want to, I don't want to break my heart, break my daughter's heart. She came in without wasting any second. She asked, Dad, where is mom? And I said, with Allah. That's what came to my mind. She said, are you telling the truth? And I said, your father never lies. So she got the idea. We cried. We hugged one another. And then I let her go in her room. But her non-Muslim friends were fantastic. Very good girls. They were comforting her and they said, things happen. You know, we'll be beside you. After four hours of our grieving and talking to other people, then we sat down, me and my daughter, with a couple of other ladies from our relations. And I asked her that you are Husna's daughter. Tonight, you have to meet me. I have two questions to you. I want you to answer, and I want you to be my leader today. She said, Dad, I'm only 15. I said, Allah will give you hikmah. You just try. You are the leader. My first question is, what are we going to do? Sabar or no sabar? We fight back strongly or we become broken. We become hopeful in Allah's mercy and have tawakkul on Allah or we break down. Which one? You tell me which path shall we take. So she gives some explanation and then she said, Dad, we have to take the path of sabr. We have to be strong and mom was strong. And if she was here today, she, she would have told us exactly the same thing, that we have to be strong and we have to rely on Allah, put our trust in Allah and move ahead. The second question I asked her, how should we feel towards the killer? Angry, hate, bitter, revengeful. How we should feel towards him. And then her answer was sympathy. I have a faith. I believe in Allah. And Allah says that if we forgive one another, then He loves me. He loves us. So when I see some people are hating, for my comfort, I look at 
the people who do not eat and that gives me comfort islam say that human being are one family you know there are lots of references from quran and prophet sayings that humans are one family they are all the children of adam and eve the true teaching of rahmatul lil alamin rahmatul lil alamin muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he took so much abuse in taif they wanted to kill him and then what was his reaction he did not even want allah to punish them he said allahumma ighfir li qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamu so i thought that's what i'm going to do i want to be a true follower of rahmatul lil alamin i want to do little bit from my part and i want to show the forgiveness and i will explain to the media to the world that this is not from me this is from islam this is the teaching of islam because islam is about peace islam is about forgiveness and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also forgiving and allah grants rewards rewards for forgiveness faman afa wa aslaha fa ajruhu ala allah so that was whole intention in me i did not know that it was going to be so effective i had no idea i was not a a, a media person i was that time sort of half dead so whatever i had in deep in my heart it came out i said forgive and an alhamdulillah as a result i realized that especially especially uh, the western world they reacted to it very very positively so many so many people i met non muslim in new zealand and outside new zealand in different different conferences many they came to me and they said that we talk about forgiveness and we thought islam doesn't teach about forgiveness but today we have changed our mind and when it was confirmed that 50 new zealand muslims had been killed murdered while peacefully worshiping again i just could not believe the news we received so much love and care so much to start with the Christchurch people in our city non muslims they showed compassion our prime minister the whole country they showed compassion the muslims from new zealand all of them they came running the muslim from all over the world they came running for example you know dr mushabbab you know from world muslim league he was there he was there with us day and night i saw him uh, running around looking after the families the saudi ambassador and then in the remembrance uh, national Rem- remembrance service you know when i was given the opportunity to speak and there i explained to the world media that why i had chosen forgiven forgiveness according to the quran and sunna then at that time i was also little bit nervous the nervousness was that how muslim world would see about my forgiveness and about the peace message but alhamdulillah soon after my lecture when i went down and took the took the seat then who came and consoled me first it was the honorable foreign minister of saudi arabia adil al jubair his excellency he came with him was brother mushabba and also uh, uh, his excellency uh, the ambassador abdurrahman al suhaibani and i still remember that his excellency adil when he kissed me on his forehead and he said brother fari you have summarized the peaceful islam for the world we congratulate you 
in the Saudi people, in the Saudi government, is in your support. Wallahi, his words at that time put my mind into comfort. It was a big blessing I needed to hear, you know, uh, support or supporting words from somebody like his caliber who is, you know, internationally recognized as a very good orator, very good orator. It was excellent. The New Zealand government and the New Zealand uh, uh, people are extremely humbled by this gesture of, uh, um, of friendship by uh, His Majesty, the custodian of the two holy places, um, in bringing New Zealand uh, pilgrims uh, to perform Hajj this year. He has uh, um, done an extremely uh, generous um, gesture that will, will uh, certainly um, help the victims and the families of this, this terrible terrorist attack uh, to move on with their lives and to heal. The, the kindness continued to, uh, to the highest level. And in 2019, uh, Brother Dr. Mushabab, he started the initiative of bringing people for the healing to the Hajj. And then it was taken over by the embassy and then Honorable King Salman, he wanted to bring the victim families to Hajj for the spiritual healing. And it was very important because we must acknowledge that there are different ways we heal ourselves. Physical healing, we take medicine. For some of the mental and emotional uh, disturbances, we take counseling. But the spiritual healing, that is, according to Islam, we call as sakina that one comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from any other medicine. Allah said. So, Hajj is something that is very, very useful for that spiritual healing, for that as-sakina. It uplifts the Iman and also it brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also closer to Allah's beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People who are living outside Saudi Arabia, like I'm one of them, you should know that how we feel about our prophet. You know, if you talk to anyone who are not from here and you say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will see tears <laughs> in their eyes because so much love. They don't speak Arabic. They were never born here. They have not seen the Prophet. They have never seen Mecca and Medina. But their Iman, their faith is so strong and their love is so strong. That's why, you know, for example, when I say to my sister, I was talking to her before I came here. My sister in, is, is in Bangladesh, my oldest sister. And I said, sister, I'm going, I'm going to Mecca and Medina. And she started crying, you know, with happiness that you are going there. You make dua for us. And on my behalf, you know, say, assalamu, assalatu, assalamu alayka, ya Rasulullah. Things like this. So it means so much for us that, you know, we come for the Hajj, we get the opportunity. So it is a priceless gift. And that gift has come from Honorable King Salman. And I have no words how to say thank you. But still, I would like to say from me and on behalf of my people, shukran jazeelan. And May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you a long life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you uh, Jannah. 
آمین فار یور جنرسٹی اینڈ مے اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ ہیلپ یو ایز اے کنگ ٹو کنٹینیو دا جنرسٹی ٹو انسپائر مور اینڈ مور پیپل یو نو وتھ اے سکینہ اینڈ وتھ دا ہائی اسپیرٹ آف ایمان